I would like to introduce. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Criterion Podcast. It's a catalyst for La Sierra Closure. It's your host, Kiani Belgrave. And your host, E.B. Today, we are launching our first ever virtual podcast due to inexorable circumstances. Uh, but we still have some great content for you guys today. Today, we have a few La Sierra students who have all been covered in Humans of La Sierra, which is like a little article that we put out every Monday that students get to use their voice and tell their stories and how what they've been doing during this weird time. So first, I want to go around and let's introduce everybody. Tell me your name, major, and year. Let's start with Taylor. Hi, everyone. I'm Taylor Armstrong. I actually j- just finished this past winter quarter. Um, it was my fifth year. I, am, I now have a bachelor's in psychology with a minor in art. And Glossia? Hi, my name is Glossia Monteiro. I am a senior now. I've been in La Sierra for forever and um, majoring in religious studies. And Mary. Hey everyone, I'm Mari. Um, I am a senior, but it's my third year here at La Sierra and I'm a biohealth science pre-med major. Awesome. All right, so I just wanted to start it off, everybody. Just tell me how you guys been doing. Like, how's this whole quarantine situation? What's the life been like since the coronavirus has basically taken over the world? Well, for me, um, because I had just finished um, my degree, I had planned to start working, but with a two-year-old nephew at home, we were scared that I would bring stuff back to him. So I've been at home looking for jobs online, prepping for grad school, um, getting housing situations for grad school situated, um, catching up on a lot of sleep, and just trying to get used to this new normal. Because it's, for me, I'm usually pretty extroverted and not being able to go outside and not being able to see all my other friends who are still at La Sierra, that's been really hard. I'm definitely a people person and staying in the house for days at a time has been stressful. I think it got to be a couple weeks ago, but that's pretty much what's been going on so far. Glossia, how's life been with you? I know that you um, you were in France at the time you got the news. So tell us about that. Yeah, so I had planned to do like a year abroad, and um, and then on March, uh, I think it was 12, uh, our director went in and was like, "Hey, I need everybody that's studying abroad to have an emergency meeting." And then in the meeting, she said, "Oh, by the way." Uh, the ACA office has called and has given you 48 hours to pack everything and you need to leave the country. And I just just laughed hysterically at first because I'm like, yeah, right, okay. And then it sunk in that it was actually happening. I had to leave. And then I just started crying Mm -hmm. um, because I wasn't expecting to come back so soon. Plus I had like my tickets bought for four other countries that I had planned and I cried about it the other day because I realized it was March 3rd. I'm like, damn, I would have been in Greece right now Um, because everything was already paid for. So I was like, I was just a little bit um, not so happy a couple of days ago, but it's been going. Um, It's definitely weird taking like four classes that is not French and you know related to my um, major but other than that it's it's tough so mari i know that you're in one of the hot spots in the nation right now and i think it, it might be cooling down but just tell us about how that's been and just dealing with all that um yeah for sure that was like one of my biggest worries coming back i knew that if i stayed in california it would have been a safer option for me um just because i am like a little bit my local compromise so I knew that going back home, there was more of a chance of me getting COVID here than staying in California. So coming here was more for an ease for my parents more than for myself. But working outside as an EMT has been definitely an experience seeing everyone um, panic. It's kind of sad. But also you see those people that are just like, I don't care. And they're just outside, not following the rules. So yeah, it's been cooling down. But our biggest fear is that it's going to spike right back up because the warm weather is like trickling in. A couple of weeks ago, I was actually working at Food for Less. Um, so, you know, that's a grocery store and a lot of people, 
there's a lot of people congregating, large groups of people. So at first I was kind of like iffy about even taking the job because I didn't really know whether it would be safe or not. But Mari, obviously you just said that you're an EMT. So like working in the medical field, do you like get scared with any of those situations that you could get into spreading the virus to your family members or catching it yourself? Um, yes and no. I say yes because I do have a grandmother here and she's thankfully tomorrow she turns 87, I believe. So that's my treasure and I don't want to harm her in any type of way. But working in the field, thankfully I did switch my company recently. So I started working in a new EMT company um, after I came back from California and they are super, super, super strict about wearing PPE, like wearing your mask, and um, they'll screen the patients before. So if you call for 911, they'll dispatch us whether the patient's COVID positive, COVID negative, if um, the screening came out inconclusive. So they're really, really good with that. And whenever we do have a COVID positive patient, we are mandated to decontaminate our bus after every single call. So I'm not too scared about catching COVID, um, I'm sure I've, I have been exposed, but in a matter of, like, affecting my family, I know I won't because my mom makes me, like, take my clothes off before I walk into the house, and then yeah. it's straight to the shower, don't touch anyone, don't talk to anyone, and then you can come and, like, spend time with the family. So that's, like, yeah. yes and no, but I'm pretty safe, I think. No, that's crazy because, like, it's it's basically we're both – essential workers technically well you're more so you're more a little bit more essential but i'm doing it but i'm living alone so like i'm not really that worried but it's crazy that you're being super strong through it all and you have your family to worry about you have your grandmother who's 87 like that like that's would be scary for me like i wouldn't even want to step out the crib but that's that's kudos to you for that yeah thank you really for your service really you're at the front line it's really crazy it's crazy time and um, Glossia, I know that you actually live in Boston, Massachusetts, right? Um, Brockton is 20 minutes south of Boston. Okay, yeah. And Massachusetts is the third highly, the third most infected state. So um, I was actually asking um, Mehdi earlier about New York, and I have a lot of family in New York as well. And I hear that really people aren't really doing the social distance thing as much as they should in these large cities. So what can you say about Boston? How's Boston looking? Or Massachusetts, where you are? Well, um, I don't go out much because I have a 91-year-old like grandma that lives with me. So she's like my everything. So I wouldn't want to expose her. But my mom, she's an essential worker. So she goes to work. And then when she comes back, I'm always here. I'm like, don't touch anything. Don't just go straight and just go sanitize yourself. Literally, sometimes as soon as you open the door, I have my alcohol spray. I'm like, all right, there you go. Like before she touches anything. But I still do the grocery shopping. Um, but I try to minimize every time I go out. And, um, and when I go out, I have my mask. I have my gloves and everything. Yeah. But here, I don't see people going out. Like, I don't see people out much. Sometimes I see people walking on the street, but that's just for exercising. Mm -hmm. But it's not like you don't see people, like, in the large group together. I know you mentioned um, doing a lot of grocery shopping or doing the grocery shopping for the household. Have you looked into options like... Um, I don't know what they're called, but they do deliver like groceries to you or yeah. Um, what is it called? Um, like shipped or uh, um, Instacart. Insta Instacart, yeah. Yeah. Have you looked at any of those? Or? I haven't. I feel like I, I don't know. I might be wrong, but I feel like it's almost the same exposure because. Mm -hmm the person is still have to go out and shop for me. They're still going to go out and, and have contact with other people. So I feel like me, because I know what's at stake, I'm more careful when I go out than they might be when they're delivering my food. So I prefer to do it myself. That's good. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I wanted to touch on this. Uh, anyone can answer this. Um, so we talked about the importance of, you know, being cautious 
And when you do have to go out, go grocery shopping or what have you, what is, how do you guys feel are the importance of staying cautious, you know, putting hand sanitizer, um, wearing gloves, making sure your mask are on? Because Glossy, you said that you have an elderly grandmother that lives with you. I have a sister that has underlying issues like asthma. My stepfather, um, he has had cancer in the past year. So these are all underlying issues that if you do catch the virus, it could be a lot worse for you. So what do you have to say to people that are going out often, whether it's for work or even socializing, when they shouldn't really be doing that and bring it back to their loved ones or just a person on the street? In those situations, I'm like, if you don't have to go out, like, don't go out. Yeah. Um, my mom, and I think tech, I think I'm technically like immune compromised as well. Um, and I believe my dad is uh, also. So all of us, like, we're, we could easily get it. But I, my nephew is two. Like, if anything were to happen, like, his life just started. I, it would be so hard to lose him for any reason. Yeah. Um, but it's like, my dad works as a truck driver. So I think he's technically one of the frontline people or like at least trying to get things to different places. Um, so he's on the road all the time and he has diabetes. So he's also like, if something happened, he's, he's screwed. Um, so I'm just like, for those that don't need to go out, people that don't need to be in large groups, like don't. It's, it's as simple as that. Do what you absolutely have to do but if you if you don't need to like don't if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah i was actually having a conversation with a friend um he works security and basically it was his job to take people's temperatures and make sure people aren't going inside this particular building if they have a fever or are showing some symptoms of the coronavirus and he brought up this one point, like a couple people said um kind of like what's kind of dismissive about him like i don't even know anyone that has the coronavirus. But um, actually recently, um, just actually last Sunday, um, I actually lost my uncle to the coronavirus. Um, he has he has diabetes. And um, he was in the hospital for actually a couple of weeks, just struggling, trying to, you know, get his, you know, get his health back, but he actually lost the fight. And so those type of and those dismissive attitudes toward the coronavirus where people are like, um, I don't know anyone that has it, or uh, it's just overhyped, just conspiracy. Do you think that, what do you guys have to say to people that say things like that? Yeah, like, Keanu, like, I'm super sorry. Like, I know exactly what that feels like. I lost my aunt and uncle as well. Um, I don't want to say I was one of those extremists that were like, oh, this is conspiracy theory, because it wasn't. I was more of the media is hyping this up a lot more than what it should be. Um, and I only say that because I was seeing how they were advertising the way EMTs were working and how first responders were working. And they were saying like, oh, this protocol is now new when the protocol was already in effect 10 years ago, but because it now applies to the situation, they were blowing it up into proportion. So like, it didn't bother me as much until it hit home. And I feel like that's when I was like, oh, crap, like, this is real. So what I say to those people is that just be careful what you say because someone is listening. Um, That's how rumors start. So unless you have complete, clear, valid, credible information, don't don't go spreading things around. Um, Just because it's not real to you doesn't mean it's not real to somebody else. Um, Just because you don't know someone that doesn't have it doesn't mean that your third cousin might have it. Like, someone down the street can have it and you won't know it. Maybe you were exposed to it, but you were just asymptomatic. So it's just, you just need to spread positive vibes for everyone and not try to be like, oh, well, I'm not fighting this, so who cares? Like, we have such a selfish mindset, even during this era and during this chaos, that it still surprises me because, like, we're all going through this one way or the other. And it's a domino effect. So can we just, like, all work together and stay home? and do what we have to do. I know, I don't know if you guys remember um, when this whole quarantine thing started, but um, there's this thing on Twitter and like Instagram, social media, whatever, um, where it was a joke that um, black people cannot, cat, cannot die from the coronavirus or cannot catch the coronavirus. 
And it kind of really took a really dark reality to that. Everyone in here is of minority. And I don't know if you guys saw the re see the research, especially in America, but the more compromised people, the people that are passing at a higher rate are people of color, black and brown people. Um, so um, is there anyone that could say anything to that? Um, as far as like just the ignorance and like Mary said, um, just how you should be, be careful what you say. I mean, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry for your losses for the both of you. Um, I cannot even begin to imagine what you're going through. Um, yeah, but uh, for the minority, I don't even want to get there because that's it embedded in the system where we as a minority, we don't get like the same health treatment. And it's the thing that has been going on for so long that we are like, I mean, I've seen documentaries for, for classes, obviously, that touch bases on that. And one of them was talking how our, like as a, a minority, uh, the system or the government has neglected that part of like, oh, I have to take care of your, you know, whole parts and that your health is compromised. And then when something such as this virus comes in, you're already, your health is already compromised. So you're more susceptible to being sick or not being able to make it because of what you've been going through for so long. I mean, I definitely say I agree um, with Taylor. Like if you don't have to go out, don't go because it's something that sometimes it doesn't hit you until like it hit home. But I don't want it to get to that point where it's hitting everybody's home. Just like stay home so it doesn't hit your home and you also don't bring it to hit somebody else's home. And mm -hmm. again, go with Mari. Uh, Mari uh, sorry if I said your name wrong. Are don't be good? like, <laughs> don't be like uh, ignorant and don't be selfish. Um, just be supportive. Yeah. Um, and just by staying home, you're already being supportive in my view. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's mm -hmm. why, that's why humanity is so important because it doesn't have to be uh, your family, like like I said, I'm I'm here by myself, but I'm doing my best to like stay here and uh, stay away from anybody else because like you have to be worried about the next person, and I know it's hard to do that in this selfish culture that we live in, like Mari said, but like we just have to try our best. Um, I wanted to dial it back to Taylor though. Um, Taylor, it's your senior year. Like, where's your head at? Like, I know this like this sucks. You don't get to walk until knows when so how do you feel about that that was a big deal for me um not gonna lie though i was very very grateful that i finished when i did and i didn't ha i don't have to take classes spring quarter because i'm done so mm. not having to take and do deal with the zoom stuff that has been wonderful <laughs> um <laughs> But in terms of graduation, and I, I touched on this a little bit on the Humans of La Sierra thing, um, I've been looking forward to graduation for so long. Um, I, I started college in 2013, took some time off, but I came back and I was like, I'm ready to do this, I'm ready to be done and move on with what I'm doing. Um, but at the same time, if, not having a graduation ceremony is what's going to keep people safe. Like, I don't want my grandparents and my nephew and aunts and uncles to come if there's a possibility of something happening to them later down the road because of it. Um, mm -hmm. But I know regardless of what happens, I'm done. I'm getting my diploma. I'm going to move on. But not being able to properly celebrate with my classmates, this major achievement in our lives, that's something that um, has been difficult for me, especially since at the end of winter quarter, like we didn't really get a chance to properly say goodbye. Like it was, this is everything shutting down, everybody go home. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll just do it for the first, what, few weeks and then we'll be back on campus. And then it turned into JK, we're shutting down till, um, for the end, the rest of the year and, we, and graduations up in the air so yeah. not having a chance to really say goodbye and be like hey this is my class we're graduating let's all have a good time let's 
we may not be able to see each other again, but we're going to say goodbye. Like there was none of that. So I think that's been another thing that's been really difficult in terms of my senior year. Um, is anybody else um, finishing this year or even next year? I'm finishing I'm next year. Next year, yeah. yeah. And Willie, I'm done in December. You're done in December? Yeah. That's Man. That's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. Um, but um, so, yeah, so how Taylor was saying, everything was super abrupt and we didn't even get the chance to say goodbye to our friends. And we actually still don't even know. Everything is still up in the air, you know? Uh, we're still confused and we don't know what's next. So what are you guys' hopes? Do you guys have hopes for the future? Do you guys, when do you guys think that we're going to go back to normal, go back to school, be able to go outside, go shopping and not be worried about catching anything? Honestly, don't know. Yeah. But I was kind of hoping that by fall, like we would be able to go back on campus. Mm -hmm. I have no hopes and I don't think we're going to be going out to the beach this summer mm -hmm. uh, or anything like that. Just for the fact that it's just getting worse. Like I, at first I used to look at it all the time, like the numbers on, um, on Google, um, just because I was so worried. And after a couple of, times checking it I got so depressed I'm like I'm not looking at it it's just not getting better because I was like okay let's see if it's getting better and no it wasn't so I don't think that it's like it's we're having a summer and I really hate the fact that like especially here in Massachusetts they're they keep giving you like oh yeah we'll be closed until May 1st and then May 1st comes like we're going to be closed until May 15th I'm like you know damn well we're not going to be closed until May 15th it's going to go longer than that just mm -hmm. say it up straight but I don't know my biggest hope at this point um even if I don't get to cross the stage like okay I still get my diploma I'll have another one once I finish my master's but um right now my mom's graduation she's she's finishing her PhD and is supposed to graduate in August. And I'm like, this is a huge thing for her. This is like seven or nine years in the making. I just want to see her across the stage and know that she's done. Like, that's my biggest thing. Like we're planning to go out there, but if things don't lighten up and everything is still crazy like this, that's, that's not going to happen. This question is for Mari. I actually have a direct quote from, uh, I'm not going to say who, but it says, um, I think we're doing very well on the vaccines, but with or without, it's going to pass. We're going to go back to normal. Basically, it's a little segment saying that we might be coming out of, we might be coming out of coronavirus uh, sooner than we expect. So how do you feel like just working EMT and seeing all that's going on, do you think that we may be ready for something like that? Something grateful that I have seen being EMT and during this whole pandemic has been the crime rate has been so low, it's insane. The amount of 911 calls we get is not as much, um, but if we do get 911 calls or it's just people scared and in panic versus us taking one person from the hospital home um, because they're like COVID free or whatever the case is. So... I want to say it is slowing down. Yes, it is. My last shift, I only had one COVID patient versus all my patients being COVID positive. Um, so I am hopeful for that. But like I told you guys before, like earlier, there are people that are just outside, like living their life because rumors have been said like, oh, this is slowing down. My boss actually sent an email this morning saying, just because you guys hear that this COVID thing is slowing down, doesn't mean that we need to stop practicing um, proper hygiene and stop practicing like putting our masks on if we are seen without wearing our mask even in our ambulance we get written up like immediately so something I am grateful for is that COVID has taught us what proper hygiene should be to wash your hands when you get home and wash your hands before you eat just continuous like be clean um, stay organized and stuff like that but even though it says it's slowing down, I just say, yeah, if it returns back to normal, let's just keep practicing this. Um, 
so we can be sure that this is going to end instead of it just lowering and staying low key. So really quick, um, before we end, does anybody have any closing statements, anything that they want to say to our last year family, any words of hope, wisdom, or just any shout outs maybe that you want to give? I'll say something to the senior class. Um, this for sure will be a year that we will never forget. Um, whether we actually get to cross the stage or not, like we're done, we're finished. We've come this far. We've made all these accomplishments. We finished all these classes. Like we, we made it, whether we actually get a chance to experience the ceremony or not, like we're done. Mm -hmm. We, we did, we did it. Like congratulations. We, we did this thing. Yeah, same. Um, just last well, year we got this. Honestly, like we're if we can overcome this, we, I'm sure we can overcome anything. I'm sure that this was God's plan to prepare us for something bigger or better that's coming um, afterwards. And I can't freaking wait to see everyone again. I miss my friends. I miss California. I miss my campus. Um, I never have been so grateful to sit in the class for four hours instead of being online at home for four hours. So I for sure cannot wait yeah. to sit back in the classroom like a normal human being. Glossia? Yeah, I was just gonna say, just stay safe out there. Um, this will pass, even if it takes a couple more weeks, a couple more days, or a couple more hours, it will pass. Just stay safe out there. And I, like, Mari cannot wait to be on campus. I've been out for two years, and I'm just like, wow. I wanna be back already. So uh, to see all my old friends and new friends, a majority of them have graduated, but I can't wait to meet everybody back on campus. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much for joining us today on the podcast. Like everyone said, I hope everyone out there is staying safe. I hope everyone is healthy, doing well in great spirits. Love you guys so, so much. Stay safe um, and hopefully we'll see each other soon.